Hey guys, this is Alex from Team Generations, back again with another budget deck profile. This time we are focusing on a Narakami budget deck profile for one of my personal favorite units, Thunder Break Dragon. Um, Narakami is my favorite clan, so I've been rocking this for a little while, kind of adapting it as the different sets have come out. Super excited to bring this to you. If you are a new player, or just a budget player in general, um, this is a much better option than just picking up like the Naoki Ishida trial deck. Uh, that is definitely one of the worst trial decks to pick up in general. So yeah, super excited to bring this to you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. Jumping right into it, we have our main boss unit of the deck. This is Thunderbreak Dragon. This released back in Aerial Steed Liberation, so it's been around for a little bit. Um, his skill is on Vanguard. If your opponent uh, has a Vanguard that's grade three or greater, when this unit would attack, it battles all of your opponent's units in the front row in one attack. So super cool to kind of wipe their board. If you're facing like a, a Yasui or a um, I don't know, Aqua Force deck that kind of fills the board and really relies on calling from hand and things of that nature. This definitely kind of depletes them, which is nice. Um, this unit skill has just been around and yeah, super solid overall. So kind of made him the core of this deck and it does have that Excel marker, which is super nice. Also has a secondary skill, which is act on banner rear. Once per turn, we can counter blast one and our opponent moves each of his or her uh, back row rear guards to an open front row rear guard unit. This also includes the one behind their vanguard. So if they have an open front row, but they have someone behind their vanguard, you can actually drag that up as well. And that can be a, a good target, a good way to get a target for a bind off. So yeah, running four of those, the main heart and soul of the deck really. Next up in our grade three slot, we have three of Teutonic Stinger Dragon. So I know this has also been around for a while. I just feel like it does play off with Thunderbreak Dragon pretty well. Um, Teutonic's Jewel Dragon also, I mean, Teutonic Stinger Dragon has an Excel marker as well. And this kind of is our first target ride if we don't have a Thunderbreak in hand. Um, if your opponent um, went second, this is definitely a, a good ride because we could set up um, our Thunderbreak Dragon's full skill on the next turn if we have that in hand. So his skill is when on Vanner Rear, when placed, we can counter blast one, choose a rear guard in our opponent's front row and bind it. And then this unit gets plus 5,000 to the end of turn. So a nice little power buff on our Vanguard. I know it's only 5,000, but every little bit helps. And uh, its auto second skill is when rode upon. We can call this card to rearguard circle, and then one of our vanguards gets 10,000 till the end of turn. So that's the real important part here. Um, first off, we can get its rearguard skill off. Uh, if we ride Thunderbreak over this, this guy pops out of soul. We can get its um, first skill off, so we can counterblast one, choose a rearguard, and bind it, which is really nice. And then when rode upon, we're giving our Thunderbreak an extra 10,000. So right off the bat, whether it's boosted or not, our Thunderbreak will be at 22,000, so it'll battle the opponent's front row, which is really nice. So yeah, I like that little power buff. We are running this at a three of. And then to wrap up the grade three lineup, um, kind of an interesting tech, but this is the Ingenious Tactics Book of Strong Arming. This is a grade three order card that came out, I believe, uh, what was it, in the alt model set with Chrono Jet and uh, Asha. Um, this this card basically its cost is cost uh, counter blast three soul blast three and we get to draw three cards and then three of our front row units get ten thousand to the end of turn. We don't have a ton of units that use a lot a lot of resources in this deck. You can definitely have turns where you might not be using anything at all because Thunderbreak can actually clear your opponent's front row, so you might not always have to bind things. Um, I find that I can get this off most of the time that I do have it in my hand, or I could just use it as, you know, PG fodder, or whatever it might be. But if you get this off, I feel like it's definitely, definitely a huge advantage. Um, and it makes a really nice push on that Thunderbreak turn. So yeah, I'm running one of those because it is so costly. Moving in then to the grade twos, starting off with two Bolt Pike Dragon. Um, Kind of an interesting card. Um, this card is a grade two 12K body, and its skill is if your opponent's front row has two or more units, this unit cannot attack. Um, this also has a 10K shield. So it's a grade two with a 10K shield, which is really nice because in the force meta, um, it's pretty difficult for an Excel deck to start guarding out. Um, this kind of helps alleviate that. I know that you are kind of restricted if they don't have anything in their front row, but or if they do have something in their front row, but um, Thunderbreak Dragon kind of helps us get rid of that. And there are other cards too. Obviously this is an Arakami deck that binds, so usually not too worried about this. And even if you can't attack, I mean, you still can intercept, which is nice and you can call this from hand. So I'm running this at a two of, um, I find that it helps with a force meta. Moving on then, we have two of our Dragonic Death Scythe. 
Um, an old card, but definitely still a good. When placed, its skill is when placed, we can soul blast two, choose a rear guard in our opponent's front row, and we can bind it. This unit then gets 3,000 until the end of turn, and its second skill is during the on rear guard circle, during the battle it attacked to vanguard. If your opponent does not have any rear guards in the front row of the same column as this unit, we get an additional 5,000. So this guy bumps up to, what is that? That is, yeah, 17,000 um, by itself, unboosted. Super nice if you're on an Excel 2 marker. Um, Still a useful card. We can get things off the field. We can pick them. We can target. We get that power boost. So I like it. Soul Blast 2 is a little heavy. Um, I know we do have that great 3 order card. That's not a end all be all in this deck, but Soul Blast 2 a little bit too many, t just too many times might not give us what we need for that. So I'm running this at a 2 of. Next grade 2 that we have is Fiendish Sword Eradicator Cho'o. Um, this guy is super interesting, um, really a staple card in pretty much every Narakami deck that has come out so far. These guys have really fallen in price, so I am including it in a budget deck profile. Uh, his skill is Vanguard, a rearguard circle. When placed, we can counter blast one, choose a column, bind one of our opponent's front row rearguards in that column, and move up one back row rearguard to the column uh, in that front row. His secondary skill is at the end of battle that your vanguard attacks. If your opponent's front row has no rear guards, we can counter blast one and stand this unit. Um, obviously, being in an Arakami deck, we are binding a lot. Um, most of the time, they're not going to have a front row, so we can get the second ability off, and especially Thunderbreak Dragon really helps us enable that if it's attacking the entire front row. I find that most of my opponents don't try to block it. Maybe they'll try to block like one or two key rear guards, but at that point, we should kind of know what our opponent is running and like bind out their key pieces so the rest of it will just kind of be fodder to be attacked so the second skill almost always goes live um and the one place you get to uh, bind and move up is another great skill so yeah running two of these which is max in standard format just a heads up there we go all right the next grade two this is kind of great too heavy this deck um there's just so many key pieces in narakami that do what we're looking to, to really get accomplished so i've kind of included these yeah so this guy is voltage horn dragon um on vanna rear during our turn if any card was bound this turn we get an additional 5,000. that power gain is pretty nice um that's honestly the main reason why we use it tons of mines in this deck as you can see so far so we almost always have that live as well and its second ability is when it attacks the vanguard um if it's on a rearguard circle we can counter blast one choose a column choose one of our opponent's rear guards in that front row and bind it and then choose up to one of our opponent's rear guards in the back row and move it up kind of similar to choo so kind of moves the pieces as we need them if we couldn't bind something and uh, get it to the front previously we can attack with him and then thunderbreak can attack next to hit all the rear guards in the front row that you just moved up really depleting your opponent's hand if they're trying to fill the board so i like him at a three of he's pretty solid for our last regular grade two we are running to recklessness dragon um one this guy is an older narakami card that came in the naoki ishida trial deck so i still kind of like it i like it because you can activate its skill on van or rear when placed we can counter blast one choose a rear guard in your opponent's front row and bind it not a ton of Narakami cards actually bind on the Vanguard Circle for a grade 2. Um, I believe, what was it, Cho'o is the only one that can do that out of all the grade 2s that we run. So, yeah, I am running him kind of for that as a ride target. Also, on Rear Guard Circle, when it attacks the Vanguard, if your opponent, uh, if your opponent's front row has one or less Rear Guards, this guy gets an additional 3,000, so that little power buff is also nice. So, yeah, running this at a 2 of kind of facilitates our strategy. Just binding and hitting your opponent for a little bit of a bigger number. To wrap up the grade twos, I'm actually again running another order card. Um, this is Power Rise Elixir. This came out in the trial decks for uh, Team Try Three. Um, not a slept on card, I would call it, but actually helps us again really facilitate what's going on in this deck. Um, our the skill is we can counter blast two, and then one of our units get twenty thousand until the end of turn. This one is interesting because you can place it on a lot of different units. Um, if you have a rear guard that you're really trying to bank on or whatever it may be, you can power them up with this card. I find that this helps us get over four stacks hitting a defensive trigger, which really shuts off a lot of our turn, a lot of any Excel decks turn almost. So this kind of helps us get over the hump there. And yeah, I've been running it, been testing it, been liking it. So I'm including it as a two of. Finally done with the grade twos. Next up, the grade ones. We are running four Dragon Dancer Rai Rai. 
Um, awesome card, it's really, really great searcher. Its skill is on Vanna Rear. When it's attack or the attack that it boosted hits a Vanguard, we look at top seven cards from uh, from our deck, reveal up to one Thunderbreak Dragon from among them and put it into our hand. We can then shuffle our deck. Uh, if we put a card into our hands, we could put, uh, and if this unit is on Rearguard Circle, we could put it into Soul. So this helps us with the cost for that book. Um, definitely putting this into Soul or the um, Dragonic Death Scythe if we need an extra Soul Blast or two. So the fact that this budget deck has a searcher and it's not you know, the Mighty Boat Dra Dragoon, the standard grade three searcher is really, really nice. I know it is an on hit effect, but since it is a budget deck, um, there's nothing much we could do. I find that this card, I definitely like always, almost every single game, I have one or two Thunder Breaks and I'm never like miss riding. Um, I always kind of have Thunder Break because of this. So super nice card to include, just a no brainer. You include it with Thunder Break. So yeah, running that at a four of. Next up we have Three, Desert Gunner Gaiden. Um, so you're gonna see with our Trigger lineup kind of why I run this guy, but definitely a nice card. It is on Rearguard Circle at the end of battle. Uh, our Vanguard attack, you get to choose one of our units until end of turn. That unit gets an additional 3,000, and your opponent cannot call Sentinels from hand for the battle of that chosen unit attack. We can put this in combination with the Grade Two Order card um, and kind of give whatever unit we powered up just that Sentinel Restrict, which is huge. So if let's say we, we drive check a critical trigger or front trigger, whatever it is, we put that on our big boosted unit that's already has the extra 20,000 power. If you're going for a kill shot, that's a really, really hard thing to guard. Um, I kind of like it. I know this card has started to spike up in price because of full Bronto's effect or that or the Eradicator, I forgot which one, but last time I checked, it wasn't too much, so I am including it in this budget deck. All right, for our next grade one, we are running four of the grade one perfect guards. Now this is a budget deck, that's why I am running these guys. Um, if you wanted to swap these out, you can do so. You can add in a Rising Phoenix. I mean, this card deck binds a ton, just like any Narakami deck. So when bound, that Rising Phoenix can come on out and really supplement your field, which is nice. You don't have to call things from hand. But yeah, it is a budget deck. Um, we are putting four of these in. So her skill, Dragon Dancer Elusia, Elusa, um, on Vanguard when placed, we can draw a card and discard a card from our hand. Uh, it's nice just to dig through some of those other pieces. Maybe you don't have that ideal grade two ride or whatever it is. Um, and yeah, it is a 7K grade one body. So yeah, nothing much going on there. Next up, we have our Dragon Dancer Anastasia. Just not a one of, this is another tech two. This is more just to slot in when there is a force meta. Her skill is on Guardian Circle. If our opponent binds zones three or more cards, this unit gets an additional plus 5,000 shields. And on Rear Guard Circle, when our other unit is attacked, uh, we can Soul Blast one and move this unit to our Guardian Circle. So definitely nice, you know, if you're boosting with her, you have her in the back row somewhere, and you wanna actually guard, you can do so by just paying her costs. So yeah, I feel like in a force matter, you just need a little extra shield, which is why we're on the Bolt Pike and her, so yeah. Moving on then to our trigger lineup. We are running one, two, three, four, five, six, six front triggers. So mostly front triggers in this deck, you really wanna be able to hit. You don't want your turn to be shut off by one defensive trigger on a force marker, uh, a force, force clan. So yeah, fronts really help us with that. And we are getting off multiple attacks typically. Um, our field is usually pretty full. Like I, I find that there's not a huge amount of like mass retire that stops this deck. Like. Not a ton of people play Dragonic Blade Master. Um, I can't think of any other like huge field wipes off the top of my head, but I really like front triggers in this deck. Uh, we are also running two critical triggers just to kind of keep it interesting. And if our if we reveal a critical trigger at any point in the game, our opponent will then kind of fear like, oh wait, he's not just running fronts, he's running critical too. So there's never just that pressure that, oh, my Vanguard's gonna swing, but you're only gonna hit me for one. So having two in there a little bit nicer than just having one. Um, there are certain times where we beef it up Beef a unit up with the grade two order card, you know, it gets an extra 20,000 and boom, I hit a crit. Great, you PG my Vanguard. Guess what? I'm gonna give it to my rear guard. That's super buffed up and hit you. Also, since we are running that grade one um, PG, we are running four regular draw triggers. Again, too, if you wanted to swap these out for four draw PGs, feel free. Um, you can replace the grade one uh, PG with that Rising Phoenix, like I mentioned, or a grade three searcher. I don't really feel like you need a grade three searcher in this deck and they're pretty expensive. So as a budget deck, I feel like it's fine with these four regular draw triggers. So we are running that. 
Lastly, we are running four heel triggers, kind of self-explanatory, don't really need to get into that too much. Um, yeah, just nice that 20k shield and obviously the heel. And then for a starter, we're just running Spark Kid Dra uh, Dragoon. You can run anything you want, no big deal. So yeah, thank you guys for watching so far. Uh, if you guys are enjoying this, just make sure to subscribe. We have tons of other budget decks coming out, regular decks as well, regular meta decks. Uh, and we continue to put up our gameplay testing videos. So yeah, I'm gonna get into a couple test hands now with this. Um, I'll show you guys what the deck can really do. All right, let us get right into a test hand. Show you guys how the deck kind of works. If you're not a big fan of the order cards too, you can swap those out, feel 100% free. Um, definitely swap the grade three order card out for something like a uh, Blood Arrow Dragon, which is a decent finisher for a budget option. Um, the grade twos could be swapped out for another Dragonic uh, Death Scythe or anything else you really feel that you uh, kind of want from the already existing list. So yeah, all right, let's draw our five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Right, looking for a grade one here. I'm actually gonna hold one. Let's put back, let's put back three. Really need that grade one. Don't wanna get grade locked there. One, two, three. All right, so we did find that grade one, not too bad. <clears throat> let's keep going now, all right. And like all of our test hands, we just assume that we go first just to make it easy. Stand and draw. All right, another grade one. Easy one. Uh, actually, I'm going to ride him. Stand and uh, draw the ride. All right, over to our opponent. Let's say we take a damage. Boom. All right, over to us. Stand and draw. Love drawing triggers. Let's go here. I'm going to say our opponent didn't call a another rear guard. I'm going to also... Yeah, I'm gonna call here just to get a little more consistency. Um, we wanna kind of pressure the on-hit ability here, so if our opponent wants the guard over this, they have to pretty much drop like a 15K shield for just like a one to pass, so let's get that going. Uh, this is drive check, boom, pass. Let's assume we hit. Ooh, we're gonna activate her skill, Rai Rai. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, we didn't find a thunder break off that, but no big deal, we have one in our hand. Let's assume it's over to our opponent. We're going to take two damage. One, two, ooh. All right, over to us. We stand and draw. <clears throat> mm, depending on the flow of the game, we really have two options here. If we want to try to build up and kind of beat down next turn, we can go with the Thunderbird Dragon. They are not, I mean, uh, with the Teutonic Stinger Dragon, but they're not on grade three right now, we're gonna assume. So this full skill won't really go live. So we are actually gonna go into Stinger first, a decent ride option. So we're gonna get an Excel two, and then we're going to draw. All right, we got Cho off that, it's actually not too bad. We're going to pop him. Let's use his skill, let's say they had one card to bind. Uh, anything else from my hand? No, all right. Gonna swing with Cho first because we can restand him actually. So swing with Cho. Uh, swinging with Tonic Stinger Dragon and her drive checks. One, two. No front trigger. Let's just argument's sake say that we restand him, get that third attack in for the turn, just to pepper them a little bit more. Alright, now it's over to us. Um, now this turn, let's say we had a guard quite a bit. One, two, three. Let's say we dropped four and we took two damage. One, two. All right, so we're kind of fully loaded for this turn, which is decent. Stand and draw. All right. Going to ride our Thunder Break Dragon. We're going to pop him out of soul, the ride ability. Uh, we get to add another plus 10 to our Vanguard. We can choose to do the Counter Blast one. I'm gonna save that though. Let us do this. Calling him there, him there. Going to actually activate this on my Choa. So I'm going to give that two. I still have one extra counter blast in order to restand him afterwards. So we're really making the most out of this order card right here by having him swing twice. So really nice little turn. All right, let's get going. So we're gonna swing the Choa first. This is 29 plus five, this is 34. We're going to swing next with our Vanguard. We do one. 
Let's get it front, no front. Okay, two. Uh, I'm going to restand him. Let's hold him for now. Let's go here. Here, gets an extra plus five. Any card was bound this turn. Do we bind anything? I don't think so, but it's all right. Swing, and yeah. We would battle the entire front row with this guy, so any intercept is really not a big deal. And that's kind of just the general gist of the deck. Um, I feel that the order cards, this guy in particular, does put on a lot of pressure. Um, if you did have the grade three order card, we could kind of go for like a kill shot if that was the, the flow and pace of the game. But yeah, overall, not too bad. I do have a lot of fun with this deck. I find that you can sneak wins off people. Um, I, it actually works pretty well. A lot better than you'd think for a budget deck. So yeah, the better the better you are, the more you play with it, the better you become. Um, you actually can compete with a lot of different decks, and it's not an absolute joke. You walk in, you know, to your locals just to have fun or whatever. Like this, this is a, a decently competitive deck for the price point. So yeah, happy to bring this to you guys. If you guys did enjoy the uh, video, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out, and more budget decks will be coming. So yeah, thanks.